with you. When I first started planning this speech, I couldn't really think of anything to say, which I'm sure shocks all of you that I would have a hard time coming up with something to say. But really, I wasn't quite sure where I was supposed to go with this. So I did the most logical thing. I passed out index cards to my fourth graders, and I had them write my speech for me. My 29 speechwriters gave me many points to work with. Some of them had strong opening lines, like, Hello, humanoids, I am Paige Thompson. <laughs> or, Hi, I'm Paige Thompson and I'm 20-something. <laughs> Some of my speechwriters were a little too honest. Through my students, I can get it, oh, though my students can sometimes get annoying and difficult to handle, they are still pretty great. I got some predictable responses as well. Caleb was a sweet boy. He learned a lot, like how to divide and multiply. <laughs> and I remember this one wonderful kid named Joey who was reading at a seventh grade level. He can also do math super fast. <laughs> as I read through more and more cards, it became quite apparent which of my lessons had actually stuck with my students. You should tell them stories about your chickens and your dog, and how you taught us some stuff that we really needed to know. <laughs> Why don't you tell them about your chickens and your dog, and how you gave us prizes, and how you're going to really miss that part. You should talk about that one time that all the girls were freaking out about what happened to your chicken. Or the time your dog ate a pan of brownies. Why don't you tell them about the time your dog ate a pan of brownies? Or about the time you were at Safeway and you spilled all the blueberries and it was very embarrassing. After I got to the third student who suggested I tell you about my dog eating a pan of brownies, I started wondering if all of my academic planned lessons had somehow been ignored or had gone through my students' heads. I mean, I planned for hours upon hours a unit on writing responses to literature and a unit on ocean pollution complete with our very own public service announcements. We spent days going through how to find the area of an irregular shape and how to classify the different quadrilaterals. None of my students thought I should mention those things. None of them felt compelled to mention anything that I had actually taught them. <laughs> I kept flipping through, and I got to the card from one of the sweetest, most dedicated students I will ever have the honor of teaching. This is a student who is still learning English, but she writes extra credit reports on the Titanic just for fun. On her card, she wrote, You are a true mother to me. I will miss you. Then I remembered, none of us wanted to become teachers because we like lesson planning, or standardized testing, or using different colored Mr. Sketch markers. Those things are fun, and teaching content is important, and it is a skill that takes a lot of work. But relationships are the foundation of good education at any level. My students did learn how to write responses to literature, and I passed packed so I can prove it. <laughs> but these children also bonded with me, and my chickens and my dog, in a more deep way, in a more meaningful way. I live in Mendocino, so I had the luxury of choosing which university I wanted to commute three hours to to get my career teaching credential. I ultimately decided on Sonoma State because of the structure of the program. At every point during the credentialing process, we have had a support net built in both on the university campus and at our school sites. The relationships we have all formed with our professors, with our students, our mentors, and each other are truly special. Though not all of us had the ideally tiered teaching experience of being partnered with a full-timer and a part-timer each semester of our student teaching, we all either had a fellow student teacher at our site, or a supervisor, or a mentor, or a professor or a classmate that we could turn to and say, hey, did you do that social studies lesson plan that was due two weeks ago? <laughs> oh yeah, me either, okay, good. <laughs> or, wait a second, what, what is the difference between close reading and close reading. <laughs> Countless times I've heard stories from other student teachers in this program about our inability to stop teaching once we leave the classroom. When our dogs eat brownies, we ask them, why would you do that? When we run into a crowded restaurant overrun with wild children, we have to hold our tongues to keep from saying, bum, ba, da, 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 da. We raise our hands during professional seminars to ask the person tapping their foot to please stop because no one can focus. We can't stop teaching because it is who we are. We are teachers, and now we finally have the paperwork to prove it. We all feel inspired, excited, and maybe a little bit nervous, 
But ultimately, we're ready to finally, officially enter the world of teaching. On behalf of all the students in the program, I want to thank our families, our professors, our supervisors, our mentors, and most importantly, our students for helping us realize that we can and will make a difference. Woo!